guys, bubbles are part of our past and they will always be part of our future. I think right now, there are a lot of indications that we're in a stock market bubble and actually some other bubbles involved. I'm going to share that with you right now in this video. Bubbles will always exist for the rest of time. They've been around for thousands of years. They will continue to happen. Why? Because humans are humans and humans get excited. They get euphoric and they take a good idea and they extrapolate it out to an unreasonable level. People will start seeing some sort of assets start going like this and then as people get excited, it'll go parabolic. And that's what causes bubbles. Probably somewhere in this range, it still makes sense. I'm speculating. Look at the stock market, what I perceive to be a bubble. What was it started on? Well, back in the day, three or four years ago, interest rates were 0%. Well, I might as well invest in the S&P because I'll get, a, at the time, a 2% dividend. Well, great. But what did it lead to? I can't believe how long this market has kept going. It has been insane. This puts the dot-com numbers to absolute shame. Here's why I think we're in a stock market bubble. This is my stock market to GDP ratio based on the S&P 500 going back to 1927 or 1928. Currently, we're at 94.8% overvalued. That means the fair value in the S&P according to this is 2630. But guys, you got to remember, several years ago, I was saying we were overvalued and fair value was like 1800. So fair value can still increase as the overall price goes up. I hear people saying the old adage of, in so many words, it's different this time. Well, Paul, you know, because of this, because of AI, world's going to go grow much faster because of, okay, whatever the story is, here's the interesting part. The story is justified on the way up and on the way down. Just like we look on Twitter and we see all these fudsters putting negative spins on good information you can see people put positive spins on bad information. This is bad information. Oh, Paul, but you don't get is GDP isn't calculated the same. Great, go figure out how it's calculated any different and apply it to this. And guess what? Instead of 94.8% overvalued, maybe it's 93%. You win, congratulations. Now I look at history and when was the last time we were at these levels? 98% overvalued. Well, back in 09, look at how we were undervalued. 37, 38% undervalued. And the next 10 years returns were 12 and 13%. Okay, let's go before then. Let's look at 2000 when we were, we didn't even get to 98%. We were in the 50% range and we had negative two, negative 3% returns over that time. That doesn't include dividends. So with dividends, almost even. Why? The more you pay for something, the less return you're gonna get. And guys, in 2000, this was the start of the internet. How much bigger is the internet now than it was in 2000? And there was still overvaluation. If this doesn't make sense to you, I encourage you to watch more of our videos to change the way you're thinking. Because back here, I thought that way. No, the internet's changing the world. There's great stories out there. They're going to do well. Guess what? Amazon was a great story. It went from $113 a share down to six during the bubble burst. And guess what? The fundamentals were getting better and better and better. And that's where I sit there and say, guys, it's hard when stocks are falling to not get caught up in emotion. Just like when stocks are going like this, it's hard not to get caught in that emotion. You can, I can still find good deals. I still find good deals all the time. Look at Nike. Nike is selling for less than half its all-time high, and it's a decent deal right now. Is it a great screaming deal? No, but I hope it gets to that point. And the difference with me and everybody else is when a stock falls, I love it more. If Nike fell to 45 tomorrow, guess what I would do? I would buy a ton. If Microsoft fell to 200 tomorrow, I would buy a ton. And if it fell even further, I'd buy even more. That's what investing is all about. That's not what I see during bubbles. I see the words, oh, I'd buy more. But let me tell you the story. Back in 06, two friends of mine were getting started in their career. Paul, we want to save for the future. Help us out. Great. Blah, blah, blah. Showed them the plan, ETFs, et cetera. Guys, if stocks fell in half, what would you do? And the wife looked at me and said, well, I'd buy more, right? And she looked at me like that, like, oh, we'd buy more. I'm like, brilliant, exactly, you'd buy more. Fast forward two years, I get a frantic email. Oh my God, Paul, I'm so scared. My stocks are gonna go to zero, what are you doing? Well, if you remember, we talked about this and I said I'd buy more. You're actually buying more? Yeah, that's what we talked about. I can't handle that. Got an email from her husband. You know, we're just gonna put our money in uh, low risk bonds and just stick with that. Okay, sounds good. And I guarantee they felt good for a while because from there, stocks fell about 20% more. But I also guarantee they didn't buy until much higher from when they sold out. So the same person who said to me, I'd buy more. I hear this all the time. Guy Spear writes in his book, The Education of Value Investor, that all the value people he knew, once their stocks started falling 30 or 40%, the ones who preached about 
holding for the long run and buying more went down, where were they? They were all gone. It's easy to be enthusiastic when investments are going like this. When I look at Workhorse, when I look at Nikola and all these companies that, that are basically at zero or very close, down 90 plus percent, where are the people now buying it? Oh, now valuation matters. I look at Tesla. Guys, look at Tesla. Talk about a bubble. And I said it before. Tesla went like this and now has been like this. And this to this time is two and a half years and the price is 414 and it's down further today to 155. And yet revenue is almost double and profit is several times higher. Explain that to me. And guess what? You know why I think Tesla's going down on further? I still hear Tesla bulls saying it's a great buy here. We need to wipe all the Tesla bulls out. That's what has to happen in bubbles. You got to wipe out all the shit and garbage. That's what has to happen. I once said, I think Tesla is the poster child for this um, bubble. I think it's crypto. Now, do I think crypto can succeed? Yes. Am I hedging myself? No. But crypto can't succeed in the way people talk about it today. Before it was, you can avoid taxes. You can, it's got to succeed in a way that has government involved. Then I sit there and say to you, how is crypto anything than just currency? The same currency you guys want, didn't, want, didn't want to be, you didn't want to be fiat currency, it is. When people tell me, oh, it's a protection against fiat currency. No, it's not. Because you're converting it to fiat currency in order to cash it out. That's the big thing. So I look at all these things saying, there are lacking fundamentals in a lot of these investments out there. And remember, we rot from the outside in. And the outside is the shit companies, the workhorses, the Nikolas, the Pelotons, the Tattooed Chef, all these ones that people were hyping in early 2021. You have ARK Investments at 158 a share going all the way down to 30. Now it's at like 45 or so. We need to wipe out all the shit and garbage. At that point, only then can a new bull market start. It's not just about fundamentals. It's about the emotion. Let me show you what I mean by that. In the 1970s, we went through a lot of stagflation, which was stagnant growth, with a lot of inflation. And let's look at valuations in the 1970s. 1966, stocks were overvalued, but not by much. 30% was the overvaluation. Keep in mind, Warren Buffett closed his partnership at 20% overvalued in the market based on history because he said, I can't find any good deals. So he closed his partnership. Look how undervalued it got. 1982 was the low. 65% undervalued. And guys, guess what? The next 10 years were, were 14% returns. It's no, not including dividends. And dividends back then were like three or 4%. It's no coincidence that, that happened. We have to get to the point where people, back in August of 1982, Barron's wrote an article called The Death of Equities at the absolute literal bottom of the secular bear, bear market. And from there, the S&P was 110 now it's at 5,200, 5,100. Death of equities, huh? Over the next 18 years, S&P went up 18 times. Sorry, 14 times. Not including dividends. We have to get to the point, as much as I hate to say it, every, as Morgan Housel says, every bear market in the past, every stock market bubble burst in the past looks like an opportunity. Everything in the future is a risk. It's not. You have to get yourself to think this is an opportunity but it's hard to do that when you're in the middle of it. It's lonely. It's exhausting. You sit there and see your stocks going down. Even with market-based ETFs, you're sitting there going, am I going broke? That is difficult. We've all been there. I've been there. I'm sure at some point early in Warren Buffett's career when he was a teenager, he was like that. The key is those people who are able to buy when everybody is scared to death, those are the ones who make the most money. This is exactly why I created the community and our software. I sat there and said, there's got to be a way to marry fundamentals and emotion because you're going to buy based on great fundamentals, but you're going to keep your investments and make the most money by handling your emotions. It's so difficult to do that. You have to create rules for yourself. That is why I did all this because it's a lonely road to be there by yourself thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, what if my stocks go to zero? It could happen on an individual basis. But on good fundamental businesses with a good balance sheet, it's very unlikely. And that's what we're trying to teach here. And that's why I created the community. And that's why you need to join at the link below. Because it'll allow you to be around like-minded investors, thousands of them that you can talk to. And I get thank yous every single day in the community. I just got one this morning. Paul, thank you so much for helping me learn a process that keeps my emotions in check. And you know what I say to them? Guys, we haven't seen bad emotions yet. 
So click the link below, $7 for seven days. It allows you to join the community, get other tools so you can marry fundamentals with the emotions. Guess what, guys? I used to think it was 90% fundamentals, 10% emotions. It's flipped. It's actually 10% fundamentals and 90% emotions. Even if you understand the fundamentals like Albert Einstein, if you don't have the emotions to stay in your investments when the, when the price is going lower, but the fundamentals are the same, you're not going to do well. That's why the community was created. Now, what should you do as an investor who wants to avoid these bubbles? Well, if you happen to own something that is driven up in value by a bubble and these bubble behaviors, I'm not telling you necessarily to sell. You don't know when the bubble is going to pop. The value could still grow and grow and grow as the asset price goes up and up and up. What matters to you is, are the fundamentals that you bought based on still the same? If they're still growing and still getting better, the price could go crazy and it still could be a decent investment for you based on where you invested at. And there's no reason to get in and out of investments. All I'd sit and say to you is if you have these investments, unless you have an opportunity cost elsewhere, then just stick on to them. Now, if you really don't want to have it because the price is getting absolutely crazy four, five, six times more than you think it's worth, then pay your tax, move on, find a better investment. Guys, you might be thinking one of these three questions or all three. One, when's the bubble going to burst? Answer, no one has a clue. Two, how bad is it going to be? Answer, no one has a clue. Third question, how can I prepare? Well, guys, there's no specific thing to prepare. What there is a thing to do is learn the right process of fundamental investing so you can buy great companies that you understand that as their stock starts to fall, you buy more because you understand their fundamentals are great. But most importantly, the best way to prepare for bear markets and crashes is inside you, emotionally. If you have the Albert Einstein of fundamentals, if they don't have the emotional fortitude to buy a good company at better prices as it falls, you're not going to do well. Especially if you're buying ETFs and you can't buy ETFs because the market's falling. Those three questions... Guys, there's nobody in the world who knows when it's going to happen. And anytime somebody says when it's going to happen, run away. Two, how bad is it going to be? No idea. In other bubbles we had, we had COVID crash, 40% fall in one month. Dot-com bubble, almost a 50% fall. The great financial crisis, a 55% fall from peak to trough. We have no idea. The point is, it will probably not be fun. But... For those investors who are able to understand that buying great companies at better prices is a good thing, it will be a ton of fun. Crashes are a ton of fun for me. On my Instagram, there are pictures of me from COVID kissing the screen with the screen saying like minus 7% that day. I loved it. During the 08 financial crisis, I swear on everything. I have four dogs that I adore. I swear on all of them. Bank of America Merrill Lynch used to call me saying you're the only good conversation we have. We call you for a reprieve from all the bad conversations. This is an absolute fact. I have the email showing it too from people saying, oh my God, it's nice to hear some, some optimism here. Lower prices are better. But how do we see these bubbles ahead of time? Well, guys, it's not just about the numbers. It's about what I see people doing and how they're behaving. So guys, if you want to see the 33 companies that I want to own forever, watch our next video. And don't forget, click the link below to sign up for our community, $7 for seven days.